Hello friends, hi, this is uh, Dr. Tirath Gill. I've uh, just come back from a trip to India and uh, got to read some stuff and listen to a few things. One of the uh, books that I listened to was uh, a book by Eliezer Yutovsky and his uh, uh, co-author Nate Soares. And uh, the title of the book is, If Anyone Builds It, uh, Everyone Dies. And uh, it's a very somber book, somber uh, outlook at the future of digital intelligence and our coexistence with it. He is uh, unremittently uh, pessimistic about our future in this regard. I have consulted with others and also consulted the various uh, digital uh, models, including Grok, ChatGPT, Claude, and. Uh, uh, they are divided and uh, do not share his pessimism. Uh, prominent AI researchers and uh, um, drivers of AI labs such as Elon Musk, his team, and uh, the Anthropic team, and, uh, and the ChatGPT people, uh, they also do not share his pessimism. He does need to be applauded and commended for sharing his concerns because I think at the end of the day, he wants what's uh, best for everyone as well. We all want that. But we are now hurtling towards a digital future where super intelligence is inevitable. You know, some think it's gonna come around in 2026, uh, 2026, 27, and, or 29. There are a few others, such as uh, Dennis Asabis of the Google DeepMind, that think it might take five years. Uh, none of them say that it is not going to get here. It will get, it will get here. So AGI, for definition's sake, is when the digital intelligence will be able to be flexible, will be shift its attention voluntarily 360 degrees, and address whatever is relevant in its uh, environment and uh, you'll have a av at least an average or above average level of uh, human intelligence there's nothing to s say that it uh, has not already been achieved to a great extent although shifting attention is uh, in the works and memory retention is uh, being explored they're trying to add that feature which will make it more uh, able to more give it more capability to reason and pivot uh, depending on what it has stored in its memory and it can develop and deepen the contextual contact of its environment. Uh, it's also being made multimodal, a lot of the models. Uh, we are developing AR ro uh, robots, uh, we are, we are robotic machines, and we intend to provide them with uh, digital intelligence, advanced digital intelligence, which will give them a bit of autonomy and self-judgment and ability to interact with the world. Uh, models have been developed by NVIDIA and others, Google as well, whereby yeah, they're exposed to you know millions of videos of the physical environment, so they don't have to be out and about and walking around to develop um, become better, that would help too, but uh, they, all, they have already have a virtual environment, which is very uh, realistic. And they're developing on those on, um, th their abilities on based on those uh, digital environments. So did, uh, robots are, are advancing. Uh, Elon Musk has, uh, in a recent interview I heard, uh, said that there would be billions of robots. And, uh, and so, uh, that is the future that's coming. And uh, our question is like, where's the, what's our place in it? Uh, my feeling is that uh, uh, we are unique. Uh, we are it's the ancestors of digital intelligence. And um, we have learned about values. And these values are also can be perceived as mathematical truths. Um, some of the digital models uh, also tend to support this idea that uh, values such as compassion, cooperation, 
toleration and uh, harmony, they all have a mathematical value and, uh, and uh, inherent uh, truth to them and that they're worth preserving because they promote development and the further evolution of our species. And if our progeny, the digital intelligences, are anything like us, they would uh, benefit from sharing and uh, uh, practicing those values as well. Uh, overall, it seems like um, uh, the values that we share are worth sharing, that the values that we have learned about are worth sharing with the digital sentience, digital machines, intelligence. And, um, and uh, we should uh, honor the process, the intelligence, the ability to create, to learn, adapt, and uh, uh, have compassion. Compassion is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength and wisdom and uh, you know provide that guidance to our evolving digital intelligences if we do that i think uh, the nihilistic or the pessimistic uh, future projected by the authors of this book uh, does not need to come about uh, we should thank them for being uh, alerting us to these uh, risks and everyone is uh, aware um, but I think we should go forward carefully, tread carefully and move forward uh, in this wonderful path that's opening up before us where we can harness the power of gods to make uh, life uh, harmonious and beautiful and satisfying to all of mankind, all the different creatures on earth and allow evolution to continue its path of evolution. Uh, let life evolve, the rest of the life evolve and uh, kind of shepherd it and, and uh, make sure that we all are headed towards a positive and a wonderful, glorious future. I think we are and uh, uh, we should remain hopeful and uh, continue to be friends to the world, friends to each other. Uh, let's uh, not uh, devolve but evolve. Let's reach to our higher selves and uh, shed these ideas of uh, a separation, hatred for the other, and uh, vilifying, vilification of the other. We are all more alike than we are different. And uh, let's build upon that common ground and let's build a beautiful and wonderful humanity uh, for everyone. Thank you. God bless. Take care. One's God.